check out this special feature of the summer of Sega all summer long here on Fancy Action Now. Super Street Fighter 2 puzzle. So basically, this is um, um, it's like columns in a way where you have gems dropping and you build bigger gems, and when they get really big and they, you explode them, it dumps a lot of stuff on your opponent. I actually had to go into the settings and slow the game down because the default on this is so crazy frenetic, it's unbelievable, and I couldn't keep up with it. I mean, I was playing CPU, and I was just like, just being destroyed instantaneously. And then I went into the settings and I'm like, oh my God, it's jacked all the way up to 11. Let's turn it down a little bit. And then I was able to actually enjoy the game. I have played this with, with some people and it is fun. Um, and it's very much like Twinkle Star Sprites, but just like with a Street Fighter, a Super Street Fighter uh, characters. And there's some Dark Stalker characters in here as well. Okay, so 
Super Street Fighter puzzle. It's Super, Super, oh, it's Puzzle Fighter, I'm sorry. Super Puzzle Fighter, Super Puzzle Fighter. Um, it's crazy good. Puzzle games, if you're a puzzler, again, the Sega Saturn is for you. We'll crack this open. There's the disc. Again, it's immaculate. There's the OB with Dan on it. There you go. There's the OB with Dan. Fantastic. Okay, another great puzzle game on the Saturn. Hudson Soft. Bomberman S on the Sega Saturn. This is the classic, and if you're not familiar, I'm gonna run down real quick why this is a big deal. First of all, it's the ultimate party game. If you have two multi-taps, you can hook up 10 Saturn controllers, and 10 people can play simultaneously. No internet connection, no anything needed. All you need is a Saturn, this game, two multi-taps, 10 controllers, and you have the ultimate party game for 10 people, simultaneous play. I could not have said that any, any swifter, okay? And then single player, double player, two player, okay? Or a four player, whatever you want. But the single player campaign on this is outstanding. The bosses are challenging. The graphics are beautiful. A lot of Bomberman games are very plain and simple and that's part of the appeal. But this takes the graphics, the graphical presentation to another level. It's more lush. There's more going on in the backgrounds. This has got like a carnival vibe and then you go through like a Zen garden. And the, the aesthetic is, is much improved over just about any other version of Bomberman that I've ever seen. And I heard one reviewer say of this game that this is the only copy of Bomberman that you ever need. You don't need any, of the, any other version. This is the ultimate version of Bomberman and I would have to agree. There's a lot of Sega Saturn games that are like that where they are the best or ultimate conversion or have the most content, etc., etc. I mean, it's just an exceptional system. The games that came out for it were exceptionally crafted. And this is no exception. In fact, this is one of the highlights of the Sega Saturn collection. So get yourself a copy of Bomberman S.
there's a lot of Sega Saturn games that are like that, where they are the best or ultimate conversion or have the most content, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's just an exceptional system. The games that came out for it were exceptionally crafted. And this is no exception. In fact, this is one of the highlights of the Sega Saturn collection. So get yourself a copy of Bomberman S. Get it! 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 Cyberbox. This is a early, I believe, 92, early released Capcom fighter, futuristic robot battling, and it is exceptional. The polish on this game really represents the, the skill of, of, those, uh, of Capcom in that time to really, you know, I mean, this is one of those games that really launched Capcom's fighting um, dominance, if I could say that word. I mean, yes, Street Fighter, but this one is, the production value of this is so much larger than Street Fighter. You've got destructible backgrounds, You've got a couple of dozen mechs from multiple factions that you can choose. Uh, there's different characters with different storylines. They're very anime-based. Um, they have their own inset picture and their own dialogue. They're all voiced. Um, there's a whole storyline that, although, the, the, again, the, the context or the details may be lost because this is the Japanese version, okay, but but it's just an exceptional, exceptional game. It's very balanced. Uh, it is very challenging. You're just not gonna walk through it. Uh, you know, I can't say enough. It's futuristic. The mechs are huge. The sounds are dramatic. Uh, it, it's just, the whole package is outstanding. So I can't really say enough about Cyberbots. This is an excellent value. And you can pick up just the game alone for fairly reasonable. Again, this is the under 50 neighborhood. So you can pick up Cyberbots, I believe, in the 20, 30 range now. Uh, and again, that is probably going to creep up slowly. Uh, the collector's edition goes now for, I picked it up for a more reasonable price. Uh, Cause I hunt, I hunt, I hunt, and then I strike. And then, uh, you know, I just, I love getting the win. The, um, the, uh, um, the price for the game alone is 30-ish. The collector's edition is in the 60 to 70 neighborhood nowadays. I do recommend it uh, if, if it's within your budget. If it's not within your budget, just get the regular game for the cheap. Get the cheap regular game and play it. It is totally worth it. There aren't that many collector's editions out there as opposed to just the singular game. So these are, the singular game is gonna be a lot cheaper for you. Get it, 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 here we go. Cyberbots. Classic Capcom robot battle. 2D sprite based fighter. And out, an outstanding one. Okay. If you want to see that. Boom. Oh, and they've got the, the English on the other side. Right? Okay, so the collector's edition includes, of course, the large outer box will give you a close-up of this. Very nice to get that gold and the the you know the metal shine on there. It's such a classy presentation. There's your there's your you know your mark of your limited edition mark.
cetera. It's got the Bludia, Bloodia robot on there. So the, probably the the main, you know, the one main character. He's good, but he's not my favorite one. You've got screen capture. Gives you an idea, gives you a little taste. There's the, the roster of characters. Right? Okay. Cyberbots. There's a lot of speech in Cyberbots, too. In the intro and on the characters, there's a lot of speech. Way more speech than the Street Fighter. There's all these little details here, like on the tab, there's a little, um, looks like Dark Side on there. Or it's one of, it's one of, their, one of the characters in there, but d darn it if it doesn't look like Dark Side. There's Zhang Yif from Street Fighter. God knows what he's talking about. That's a, that's a definite character, and then there's a ninja girl. I don't know who that is, but I know that's Zangief. And there's like a, uh, a Zelda-like character on that part of the box. So they've got all this hidden stuff. Oh, from Street Fighter. What is it, Sakara? I think, or Sakura? Mm -hmm. Then you get an, a fold-out. This is a pop-up of a dramatic game scene of two different mechs. So it's like a pop-up book, but it's like a diorama of... of a Cyberbot's water battle. There's a destroyed battleship in there as well. So, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the uh, that's what it looks like again in in beautiful shape it says up here secret file this FYI and then you have an art book this is just an insert where the game goes. This is just an insert that the game goes into. I keep it out because I like to play it. Wow. There's some more characters here. There are more Street Fighter characters. God, if that doesn't look like, like poison. And this is Sagat with, it looks like Ryu is hanging off the front of him like he's in a baby Bjorn. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's that Ryu is in his, in his baby Bjorn. So weird, weirdness, you know, again, Jap Japanese weirdness. All right, I'm going to put this back. And then here is the art book for Cyberbots. And this is, that's what you get. You get the pop-up, you get the game, and you get this art book. And it's very nicely made. Okay? And it is 100% it is fan service of the game. Cyberbots DX Secret File. And you get some, you know, goofy. You got, there's some CG, there's a CG in the intro. Just a little bit CG, but it is a sprite-based game. And you can see it's very colorful, the artwork is wonderful. There's a whole lot in here, too. This is a CG representation. This is the guy who's in the CG intro over here, this guy. There's like a home scene with one of the, a diorama home scene of one of the, uh, one of the teams that you will battle. It's kind of like a father-daughter team. It's like a, a father-daughter evil scientist team. 
this is some representations of models and you can build like a miniature set as they like to do here's just a kind of a splash page of all of the characters the guy up here in the white you've seen him in um, um, I believe it was um, it's a fighting game I believe it was on the Wii but you'll see him in, in some fighting games making a cameo as a character. This is like a realism. This is kind of like a Marvel shot where it's like, you know, what's the, what's the aftermath like to real people? And, you know, just all kinds of art and story. There's a comic. <laughs> Some more of that. It's a Q and A comic. So it's just you know it's nice. There's there's a lot more, but you know I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. But the um, if you want we can do um, if I see in the comments you want a Cyberbots episode we'll probably do it anyway. But if you want a Cyberbots episode. We can do that, and we're going to highlight a lot of these games. Some will be multiple in one in one episode to keep things short, uh, and then there are other games that we'll spend the entire episode on. I'm going to try and keep them to 15 minutes, but definitely during this summer we are going to feature a lot of these games in their own videos. Let me go ahead and put this away. Okay, so there you go. My entire Sega Saturn import collection with one domestic title, which was free, which was Daytona with my system. Everything else that I have for the Sega Saturn is an import game. I do not have any of the tall cases. I don't have any of that. I don't care about that. They're too expensive. A lot of the versions have limitations or missing elements or you know, been edited in a certain way. Um, I love the import scene. Uh, you know, there's something for everybody there on every budget level, okay? You can pick up a Saturn for 50 bucks. You can pick up a play action replay or whatever they call it, or action replay cart and do the region unlock for either 20 or 30 bucks, okay? You can pick up games like Last Bronx for under $10. You can pick up some of these classic arcade games from every genre under 20. Under 20. You never have to leave 20 bucks if you want to. Uh, so they're all out there. They're, you know, when you order them from Japan, you get them in this beautiful, pristine condition. Do not, if you order from Japan, again, I've never had a bad experience. So. The Sega Saturn has become so much more than I ever thought it was. I thought it was a failed U.S. console with overpriced games that were, you know, a mixed bag. And you know what? That's not a lie. And it's not necessarily a bad uh, evaluation. Okay, but the Japanese market for the Sega Saturn is the complete polar opposite. It is amazing, it is weird and niche and unique, and there are so many crazy, goofy titles to look at and find and discover. Again, if you wanna go somewhere and learn about all these games, you can see the entire collection, a video of the gameplay, and a review on description of the game at Sega Gaga Domain. Go to Sega Gaga Domain, Click the Sega Saturn on the right hand side. He's got the systems lined up. Click Sega Saturn and it will bring you to a page that you can alphabet or the games are alphabetically sorted. And again, there's like 12 to 1500 titles that you can go and, and check these out before you make a buying decision. Okay, but even so, you're going to be able to go and get an import copy of Virtual Fighter 2 for under $20. You're gonna be able to get a copy of Last Bronx. You're gonna be able to get a copy of Bomberman. You're gonna be able to get a copy of some of these games at a very reasonable price, much less than what's going out even in the retro scene now, okay? 
The Sega Saturn is my favorite system to collect for, and there's a reason for that. I collect PS3, I collect Xbox, um, PS2, PS1, um, you know, others, uh, but the Sega Saturn is by far been the most fun for me and really defines me as a retro gamer slash collector. So go out there and be part of that. You're gonna raise up my prices out there uh, and get into it, but please do yourself a favor. If you're a retro gamer, you enjoy Sega products, you enjoy video gaming, um, go out there and get it. Fighting games, shooting games, Neo Geo conversions, um, puzzle games, some of the finest games ever made, uh, in the 90s and ad infinitum are on this system. Take advantage of that. And all I have to say is welcome to the Sega Saturn and the Summer of Sega. Hello sweet babies, this is LVA Toro for Fancy Action Now and I'm here to announce the summer of 2016 is officially on my channel, the Summer of Sega. We are going to feature the Sega Genesis, the Sega Saturn, the Sega Dreamcast, games, reviews, gameplay, you name it, we will be doing it. Special features, repros, it is going to be the biggest summer of Sega you've ever seen. Recently.